So now I want to go through the infected cell for a number of viruses and show you how they make RNA and what is their strategy for expressing the genome. Because all these viruses, well, you know, there's seven classes of RNA genome, of, of genomes in general, uh, and the RNA genomes have specific ways of expressing their RNA. So the first, we'll look at plus strand RNA viruses. We're going to look at picornaviruses as an example, poliovirus. Uh, and then we're also going to look at another kind of plus strand RNA alpha viruses. And the first, the picornas. These have plus strand RNA genomes, right? They're positive stranded in the virion. They're naked. They come in the cell. Uh, they're translated. And then once they're translated, the enzyme, the RNA-dependent RNA polymerase is produced, and that can replicate the genome. And replication is very simple. You make a complete copy of the plus strand. You make a minus strand copy. That's shown right here. And minus strand full length complement. So that's what the enzyme does. And the enzyme can only do that after it's made. So translation has to occur first. And then it's copied again to make more plus strands. And these plus strands can be either mRNAs or genomes. So at some point in infection, they can be translated into protein. And then later in infection, they can be packaged uh, into virions. So this is relatively simple. The mRNA is the genome. It couldn't be simpler. And so let's take a look at how this happens. Uh, again, these picornaviruses, polio-like viruses, they bind receptors like every other uh, animal virus that we're going to talk about. We talked last time how we think the RNA gets in the cytoplasm. And once the RNA comes out of the virion from a, from a vesicle, then it can be immediately translated because it's plus-stranded RNA. It hasn't, doesn't have to go to the nucleus. It doesn't have to go anywhere else in the cell. It just gets translated. So ribosomes come on, translate it, and make viral proteins. Uh, among the viral proteins that are made are the, is the RNA-dependent RNA polymerase, which is shown in blue here. And this will copy the viral genome. It takes it from plus-stranded to minus-stranded uh, to plus-stranded. Now, this whole process, interestingly, happens on membranous vesicles. It doesn't just happen floating around in the cytoplasm. This happens to be the case for all plus-strand RNA viruses. They induce the formation of vesicles. They actually take over the whole lipid machinery of the cell and they divert all the membranes to their own use. So the, the ER and the Golgi actually dissolve in cells infected with these viruses. And you get uh, these small vesicles made and the RNA synthesis occurs on their surfaces. We think that's to increase the efficiency of the process because it's probably easier to have things happen on the surface and where all the components can be concentrated in one area. All right, so that's how the replication works. Make genomes on vesicles. Some of these uh, RNAs that are made can go back into the translation pool. If it's early in infection, you need to build up a lot of capsid proteins. But then later on, they can go into new virions, which then leave the cell. So that's a pretty straightforward uh, picture. Let's look at the genome in a little bit of detail. So this is the RNA genome of poliovirus at the top. Again, it's plus-stranded. It's about 7,500 nucleotides long. And it has some characteristics that we've mentioned briefly. It has a 5' untranslated region, a 3' untranslated region. It's polyadenylated. So these are all characteristics of messenger RNAs. But what is different from a message is that there's a protein linked to the 5' end. So where a messenger RNA would have a cap, these genomes have a protein. And that protein is part of the primer for RNA replication, as you will see. Now, uh, as you'll see later when we talk about translation, RNA viruses have a problem in making multiple proteins. Because unless you can make multiple RNAs, there's no way to make more than one protein. So in general, in eukaryotic cells, one mRNA typically encodes for one protein. And as I've told you already, the viral genome of polio is, a, is an mRNA, a single mRNA. So the problem here is how to make multiple proteins from that. And there are a couple of different strategies that you'll see. One of them is very simple. You make a long protein initially. You translate the whole genome into a long protein. This is like 250,000 Daltons in size. And then you process it with proteases. And the proteases are actually encoded within the long protein. So for example, there's a protease here called 2A and another uh, here called 3C. And as those are being made, they can start to nibble away at the at the polyprotein, which is what we call the precursor. And eventually, you have about a dozen or so viral proteins made, all by the action of this protease, these two proteases. So that's one solution to being limited by the eukaryotic cell and not being able to make more than one 
protein per messenger RNA. Now here in the genome, we have capsid proteins, of course. We have our proteases. We have VPG right here, which is the protein linked to the end of the genome. There's the coding region for VPG. And here is our um, RNA-dependent RNA polymerase. It's called 3 d Paul. And as soon as that's made in an infected cell, and it's processed by the protease, that can start replicating uh, the genome. Now the genome of the virus, remember I, I've showed it to you already as a straight line or a squiggly line, but it's never straight. It always has some structure. And this is in fact uh, what the, the coronavirus genome looks like. It has a lot of secondary structure. There is a clover leaf at the five prime end, so a three stem loop type structure. Uh, there's a uh, stem loop structure somewhere in the middle of the genome called the Cree element. We'll see what that does. And then at the three prime end, there's a pseudonaut. Remember, a pseudonaut is that funny twisted RNA secondary structure. These are believed to be signals to tell the RNA polymerase to replicate this molecule because we know that in an infected cell, no cellular RNAs are ever copied by the polymerase. As soon as that polymerase is made, it goes right for viral RNA. So there must be some signal there. And that makes sense, of course. You don't want the polymerase copying cellular RNAs. That would be a waste of time. So uh, these signals, this cloverleaf, decree, and the pseudonaut probably make the polymerase specific for the viral genomes. Now, remember, at the five prime end of this RNA, there's a little protein called VPG, shown right here. It's about 20 amino acids or so long. It is linked to the first base in the RNA, which happens to be a U, shown here, this is uracil. It is linked by a phosphodiester bond to a tyrosine in the protein. You know, tyrosine is one of those amino acids with a hydroxyl, and that's how it's linked uh, to uh, the protein. So VPG is linked to it, and then here comes our clover leaf. And as you will see, VPG is a primer for RNA synthesis. Now VPG, in order to be a primer, has to have two bases attached to it. Just two, and then it serves as a primer. And that is VPG UU. And then it can sit down on the viral RNA and be a, uh, a primer. And the way the U's are added to VPG is on that Cree element. So if you remember, I will go back two slides. In the middle of the genome is a stem loop called the Cree element. This is a very specific sequence whose function is to serve as a template for adding two U's to VPG, so you can make it a primer. So here we have the Cree element in the genome, the viral polymerase, this is actually a precursor of the polymerase with the protease attached, recognizes the Cree element, uh, then VPG comes in and sits into the polymerase. You see there are three of them here, three polymerase molecules, those are the U-shaped blue molecules. And then at the top of this loop in Cree, there's a stretch of A's, and those serve as a template for adding two U's to VPG. So this is called a uridylation assay, or a uridylation reaction. We're putting two U's onto VPG just so it can be a primer for RNA synthesis. So this is really unusual. Not many viruses do this. All the picornas do it, but not, not others. Uh, among the DNA viruses, you'll hear about one next time that also uses a protein primer. So the virus <coughs> makes these VPG PUPU, and then it uses them to prime RNA synthesis. Now for these viruses, RNA synthesis is very unusual. Not only does it happen on membranes and it uses a protein primer, but the template is a circular RNA. So remember, I've showed you so far these picornavirus genomes as linear RNA molecules. When they're copied on the surface of those vesicles, they're actually circles. So it can show that here. Here is, here is one part of one of these vesicles on the upper left. There is a viral protein which, when it gets made, gets embedded <coughs> in these membranous vesicles. So this protein 3AB is quite hydrophobic. The viral genome then is attracted to that protein through the interaction of a cellular protein called PCBP with part of the clover leaf and part of the 3AB molecule. The other end of the RNA, the polyadenylation, the polyadenylated sequence, binds a cell protein called PABP, poly A binding protein. These are cellular proteins that function in mRNA synthesis. And this ends up circularizing the RNA because PABP binds to uh, a molecule of the viral polymerase 3, 3CD, 
which in turn binds to the clover leaf. So you see you have this interesting set of interactions. The RNA is brought to the membrane by a protein RNA uh, interaction and then it's circularized by an RNA protein protein interaction. And that is the template for RNA synthesis. If you disrupt this structure, this circular structure in any way, ge genetically, biochemically, you prevent RNA synthesis. So what happens here, we've got our, remember our VPG is, is uridylated on this molecule. And somehow this uridylated VPG gets transferred to the three prime end of the genome. It hybridizes and then the polymerase goes with it. And now the polymerase is beginning to copy the genome. All this is happening on the membrane, but we've taken the membrane away to make it simple. So eventually this polymerase will copy this plus strand. You get a double-stranded product, a minus and a plus strand together. And then the same thing basically happens to make more uh, plus strands from the minus strand. So it's a very unusual membrane-bound, protein-prime, circular RNA-based uh, replication system. Now in the infected cells, remember I told you that the virus, these viruses, these plus strand RNA picornaviruses induce vesicle formation. So this is an electron micrograph that shows that. So here's an uninfected HeLa cell. Uh, here's the plasma membrane here and ER and mitochondria, typical normal looking cell. But a few hours after polio infection, um, the ER and Golgi are gone and the cytoplasm is full of these double membrane uh, vesicles. The smaller black dots, by the way, are, are new virus particles. This is quite late in infection, so you've already got new virus particles made. These, these, tend to, these turn out to be uh, double membrane vesicles, and if any of you know about autophagy, you know that these are generated by the autophagic process in the cell, autophagic process in the cell. So the virus, autophagy is, re, is a response to stress, so when the virus infects the cell, the cell responds by inducing autophagy. But the virus says, I'm going to take these vesicles and use them to make my RNA, and that's what it does. So what turns out to be a stress response, and the virus ends up uh, utilizing for RNA synthesis. So that's the way the plus strand RNA viruses replicate their genome. The overall picture is quite simple, although the details that I've told you are, they seem complex, but they're really not, and they're quite interesting. Alpha viruses also have plus strand genomes. Um, but for reasons that are not clear, except that it works, the way these work, uh, as you will see, they translate a little bit of this genome, but not all of it. And to access the rest of the genome here, they have to make a subgenomic mRNA. But they also replicate their genome through a minus strand uh, complement, just like the picornaviruses. And so these viruses, Synbis virus, Semleaky forest virus, these are alpha viruses. They get into the cell by endocytosis. Uh, the viral RNA, again, ends up in the cytoplasm. This is a plus strand RNA. It does not need to bring in anything with it. It comes in the cell, it's naked, it gets translated. You can see it's being, uh, ribosomes are attaching to it and you're making some viral protein. And that protein that's made, the first protein made is the viral RNA polymerase, shown here, all these NSP proteins. And that will go on and replicate the genome, make a negative strand and a plus strand. Now, as I told you before, in order to access the rest of the coding region of the RNA, and you'll see this better in a moment, uh, you have to make a subgenomic mRNA. That's done by the viral polymerase here from negative strands. You make a small RNA so that you can make proteins that are encoded uh, at the C-terminus or the three prime end of the viral RNA. So let's see how that works. So here's the schematic of the genome on the top. This could be a picornavirus, except that instead of the VPG, it's got a cap. So now it's more of a typical mRNA. It has a poly A at the three prime end, it has UTRs at both ends, and it has a cap. So this RNA, rem remember, it's in the virion, it gets into the cell, it's translated immediately uh, to make these proteins. These are the RNA polymerase and accessory proteins. Now there happens to be a stop codon right here. This red dot is a stop codon. So it can't translate the proteins downstream from that. I don't know why this is existing this way, because picornas don't put a stop code on here. They translate the whole genome and they process it. It just works. It doesn't make sense to us, but we're looking at it from a human viewpoint and that's always wrong. In order to translate these proteins, the virus has to first make a negative strand. So this RNA polymerase copies the plus strand and makes a full length negative strand. And then it recognizes a sequence in the negative strand to make an mRNA. 
So it's called subgenomic mRNA synthesis. That's a capped in polyadenylated RNA, and from those, the virus can make other proteins that are encoded down here. So it's weird, but you know, it works, and so whatever works in evolution uh, can be selected for. All right, those are two kinds of plus strand RNA replication schemes, right? Polyprotein, they're both actually polyproteins, except the second one has an mRNA, a subgenomic mRNA thrown in. <laughs>